I'm going to start this with a, with a basic problem. I'm going to start with, and you don't have to write this down, the absolute value of x equals 12. Okay? So I'm just starting with this, and we're going to talk about what our solution of this would be. So for this problem, if I said the absolute value of x equals 12, what can you tell me about x? It's 12, it's 12 because the absolute value of 12 is 12. It could also be negative 12. Yes, because absolute value, when we say the absolute value of x is equal to something, it is always equal to the positive and negative form of that number. When the absolute value of x is equal to something, it is always equal to the positive and negative form of that number. So then when we look at problems, like let's look at a. I know it's worked it out, but I'm going to work it out as well and talk through it with you. A says 3x plus 2 equals, I'm sorry, the absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 8. Okay? So if the absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 8, I need to get this absolute value by itself. Just like when I'm solving for x normally. Same idea is going to be true. I'm trying to isolate the x term. So what do you do first? You're going to subtract the 2 from both sides. So minus 2, minus 2, and then I get the absolute value of 3x is equal to 6. But think about what we just said. We said that the absolute value of x is equal to the positive and negative form of that. So if I know the absolute value of 3x is equal to 6, then I really know two things. The first thing that I know is that 3x equals positive 6. What would be the second thing that I know? Yep, 3x would also equal negative 6. So how do you solve? Divide both sides by 3. So I divide by 3, and I get one answer is x equals 2. Then divide by 3 again, and I get x equals negative 2. So I have two answers. Think about why graphically we would have two answers to this. Yes. They're kind of, it's like our two roots, essentially, because I have an abs because it's a V, and I am looking for essentially where my roots are, theoretically, give or take a little bit of knowledge there. But it would cross twice because the graph does go back down because it is decreasing on part of it and then it turns around and it is increasing again. Okay? All right, so let's look at problem three. We have one half times x plus two equals ten. What do you think we should do first? We could multiply. I'm going to tell you, though, that multiplying with absolute values can throw things off because you're distributing something that is outside the absolute value to what's inside the absolute value symbol, and that changes things. So I can't really distribute. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. It depends on the number. If it's positive, you can always distribute it in, but if it's negative, it throws things off. So it's one of those things that's easier to not do that, which is weird because that's breaking like every rule you've ever been taught before. You've always been taught distribute and then solve. But we don't want to do that with absolute values because it's going to give us the wrong answer. So if I can't distribute this, then what can I do to get rid of my one half here? I can divide by one half. So if I divide both sides by one half, what is 10 divided by one half? Nope. Huh? Oh, it's divided by one half, so it's 20. It is 20. It's okay. So 10 divided by one half is 20. If you're trying to understand that mathematically, think about how many 50 cents you could get out of $10. Okay? You could get 20, 50 cents out of $10. So now I have the absolute value of x plus 2 equals 20. So what can I do with this problem? Can I subtract 2 at this moment? No. Why not? Still in absolute value symbol. So at this point, I have to separate it out into two problems. Um, sorry, x plus 2, no absolute value, equals positive 20. And what would my other one be? 
X minus 2 equals 20. And how do I solve? What do I do? Okay, what's your question? Oh, I'm sorry. That was my bad. I apologize. That should be a positive 20 and a negative 20. Thanks for being awake this morning. So obviously I'm not. There you go. Is that better? Does that look better? Okay, so how do I solve for X? What do I do to get rid of that 2? Subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, what is 20 minus 2? 18. Okay, and then I'm going to do that on the other one. What is negative 20 minus 2? Negative 22. Wow. It asks you to graph your solutions on the number line. If I'm going to graph my solutions on the number line, all that means I need to do is plot the numbers on there. So one of my solutions was positive 18. Where is that going to be on the graph? Between what and what? Negative 22 and 18. Okay, I asked where 18 was going to be on the graph. Um, yes, what is this middle number here? 20. So it's going to be between 16 and 20. It's going to be at 18, which is in the middle of those. Whoa. Okay, where's negative 22 going to be? Right here. Right by and 24. Right in the middle. 24 20. and 20. No, a little bit off. Negative 20. 24. Right there. Yeah. Cool. So there-ish. Yes. Okay. So those would be the graphs of my two solutions. Okay, let's look at number four. Okay, so I'm solving for x. I need to get x by itself, which you really need to get first the absolute value by itself. So what do I do? How do I do this one? What am I going to do first? I'm going to subtract five from both sides. So negative two times the absolute value of three x minus six equals negative four. Okay, I need to get rid of the negative two that's in front because again, if you were to distribute that negative two in, it will throw off your answer. I promise. If you don't believe me, try it one time and see what you get. And I'm going to not do it. And I promise I'll get the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative two. And I get that the absolute value of three x minus six is equal to positive two. So, and this is always your goal. Your goal is always to get the absolute value symbol by itself. Because once the absolute value symbol is by itself, then you can separate it out. And why do we separate this out? Why are we going to write this now? I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Why are we writing 3x minus 6 equals positive 2 and 3x minus 6 equals negative 2? Yes, because whatever is inside the absolute value symbol, whatever is inside the absolute value symbol can either be something positive or it can be something negative. Either way, when it comes out, it's going to end up being positive. Same idea, we can put clean clothes in the washer, they come out positive. We can put dirty clothes in the washer, they still come out positive. And then we just solve these. And these are easy problems to solve. We like, well, at least I think you like solving like basic, these are called linear equations because there's no exponents in them. So what are you going to do mathematically? Add six. So we get three X equals eight. And then what do you do? Divide by three. And I get eight thirds for my first X. So there is a tendency there is a tendency for people to think, oh, if one answer is eight-thirds, the other answer is negative eight-thirds. Okay? It's not, so keep that in mind. You still have to work out the other one as well. So what do I do with the other one to solve 3x minus 6 equals negative 2? Add 6 to both sides. So I get 3x equals 4. And then divide by 3, and we get x equals Four thirds. So my two answers are eight thirds and four thirds. Okay, problem A. They have worked out problem A for us, and I'm going to just talk through it. We're not going to do it, and this is the last problem we're going to look at, and then I'm done for today. Okay, we're on page 84, right? 84? Okay. 81? 84? 81. Okay, sorry. 
Example A. Um, so it says the negative, absolute, negative 5 times the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 2 equals 12. So mathematically, what do you do first if you're solving this problem? Subtract two. You subtract 2. So they did that, and uh, if I subtract 2 from 12, what's 12 minus 2? 10. So they have that here. Okay, what are they going to do? What are we going to do next to get rid of this negative 5 here? Divide, Divide and I get... Negative 2. So it says absolute value of x plus 1 equals negative 2. And they tell us that there is no solution to this. Why? That's my question. Why would there be no solution to this problem, but there hasn't been no solution to any other problem? Yes, Ian. Okay, think about absolute value. You put something in the absolute value function, and it comes out, and it's always going to be what? But this is saying that you're supposed to put something in the absolute value function, and when it comes out, it's going to equal something that is? Can an absolute value ever equal a negative number? No, because absolute value will always equal something that is positive. So that is why there's no solution. Because absolute values are never negative. Absolute values, like when you have the absolute value symbol, you can never equal something negative. Now that is different because there was, I was thinking back to like, what did my kids struggle with last year in this? And they would struggle with if we had x plus 1 equals, and you don't have to write this, sorry, the absolute value of x plus 1 equals positive 2. And then which we rewrite as x plus 1 equals 2 and x plus 1 equals negative 2. I need you to understand that this problem and this problem are two different problems. This one, what we're saying here, x plus 1 can equal negative 2 because where is x plus 1? Do I? It's not in the absolute value here. And it, what it's saying is what's inside the absolute value can be something negative, but what the absolute value equals can never be negative. Those are two different things. The numbers inside the absolute value, so x plus 1, I could put anything I wanted to in there for x, and when I added 1 to it, it could give me something negative, but when it comes out, what's it always going to end up being? Positive, because when you put something in the absolute value, it always comes out positive. What this is saying, to kind of give you an analogy, this is saying if you put something in the washing machine, it's going to come out dirty. You can't ever put anything in the washing machine and it comes out, well, <laughs> okay, just, just using what a, the intended purpose of a washing machine. I'm not going to say everything comes out clean. But if you put something in the washing machine, it's not going to come out dirty. Okay, so it's not going to equal something negative. But what you put in the washing machine can be something that's dirty. Okay?